Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. How are we all doing? I feel a bit odd um, in this setup because I very rarely do sit down videos. However, I've been meaning to film this one for ages and so I thought let's just get it done. Whilst the baby's asleep, um, Hainsey's not here because he's working so it's just me so I've just grabbed some time when I know he's down for his big nap and um, we should have enough time to film this. So, I thought I would film a Big Baby Buys video purely because I just found these so helpful. When I was pregnant, I watched so many of these just to get your head around what it is that you need. And so I'm particularly gonna be talking about kind of high price point things, things like the buggy, the bed, any sort of accessories surrounding that nappy bags, all this kind of stuff, things that cost, basically everything costs pretty much over £100, if not very close to £100. So one thing I would say is if you are planning to get pregnant, I would start saving <laughs> for those things, because if you don't plan it financially, everything is so expensive. So if you try and buy it all in one go, it's just a lot. So. First off, my advice would be to save about 2,000 to 2,500 pounds, possibly even 3,000, depending on your taste and what you wanna get. But bearing in mind that a buggy can be up to 1,000 pounds, car seats can be like 100 to 200 pounds, the cot can be 200 pounds, like everything can be so expensive. Obviously there are other things, like you don't have to spend 1,000 pounds on a buggy, you could easily get a great buggy for 300 pounds, 400 pounds, or you could do second hand. But I'm just sort of just letting you know if you want to kind of have no limits to what you want to be able to get and you want to be able to just go and have a look and think that's what I want, I'm going to get it, I would advise you to save some money, is all I'm saying. But obviously people will have different opinions on how much you should be spending on this stuff, it's totally up to you. But ballpark I would say about two grand. That out, that out the way, finances out the way. So I've decided to make this video part of what I'm calling the new mum series which is just a load of videos around being a new mum. There's so many things that I wanna talk about and I get asked about, but I just suddenly thought, what a great idea to just create a separate series on my channel all about being a new mum. And I thought this could be the first video within that series. I'm also trying to get it up over the Black Friday weekend so that you could maybe get some discounts because I know a few websites that I'm gonna talk about have definitely got some good discounts. Um, so I thought that might help as well. I'm also gonna do a separate newborn essentials video purely because not everything that is in this video is essential for you to have when you first have your baby. So I thought it would be useful to do a video centered around what you actually need for those first few weeks because a lot of this stuff you don't really need until they're maybe a month, a month and a half old, just from my experience. Um, so I thought that'd be helpful too. But anyway, without further ado, let's get on with this because it's gonna be a really long one. I'm gonna go straight into it and I'm gonna talk about the main things. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the buggy. Like I say, when it comes to buggies, you could easily spend over a thousand pounds. And I was shocked when I first started looking at buggies and saw the price of them. I was recommended a few from other mums. And I also went and had a look at and like test drove some buggies. I feel like you can get recommended buggies, but it really is, well, for me, a lot of people told me about the Bugaboo, for example. But when I went to test drive it, I just felt like it was way too bulky. I wanted something a bit sleeker. I just imagined, I mean, obviously we went into lockdown as well whilst I've had this baby. So I haven't got to do as many of the things that I imagined I would be doing. But when I first set to buggies, I thought I don't want a bulky buggy that's gonna be annoying and awkward to maneuver around like a coffee shop or a restaurant if I meet friends for lunch or something like that. I don't wanna be that person that's got this big bulky buggy that's just annoying to move around places. Also the size of the basket underneath the buggy became really important to me because I noticed how small some of them were and how big some of them were. When I first went to look at buggies I really liked one from Maxi Cozy that I saw in John Lewis. I can't remember what it's called and I don't think they do it anymore. I think it's called the Adora but Maxi Cozy was a brand that was on my list as was Eye Candy and also the Egg Stroller. A friend of mine recommended me that and then when I went to look at it like, that was my top choice but that's the most expensive one. And I don't know if it's actually worth it. And looking at things like the bassinet, I don't think it's that practical now that I've had a baby because it doesn't look like it, the hood goes over far enough. All these little things that you learn once you've had the baby. But the egg stroller itself looks gorgeous. It's really sleek, but ultimately, 
I don't think it would have been the one for me. I was very, very lucky and I got gifted my buggy from Eye Candy. The Eye Candy buggy I was recommended was the Eye Candy Peach, which is their most expensive one. When they reached out to me, it was over lockdown and they wanted to create some content around their Eye Candy Lime buggy, which they were relaunching in some new colours and new fabrics. Obviously I accepted because who's not going to accept a gifted buggy? So they sent it over and I cannot tell you genuinely how happy I am with this buggy. Obviously, initially when they said we want to do, we want to send you the eye candy lime, in my head I thought, oh, but I was recommended the peach. Upon receiving the eye candy lime in the new colourway and I got it in black, I all, there was always something a bit too flashy about the peach for me. The lime is just, per, I just feel like it's my perfect buggy. Um, and I'm not just saying that because it's gifted because I could have quite easily got that buggy, sold it and bought what I actually wanted. But I actually wanted this, like, this is the perfect buggy. I've had no... There's, there's nothing about it that I'm like, oh, I wish it had that or it'd be nice if it had this. It's been absolutely perfect. It's sleek enough for me. It feels nice and compact, but the basket underneath is really nice and big. The bassinet um, attachment is really nice and cosy for Gabe. We haven't used the actual um, pushchair bit because he's just been in the bassinet because he's only three months. But when we put it together, that looks great. Sorry, I've got my baby monitor on because he's asleep and it just went off, it's fine. Um, which we will talk about soon. Honestly, I just think it's the best buggy. <laughs> and I really don't feel like I would get another one, to be honest. I feel like this I will quite happily have until he's four. I think you can have it up until they're four. But in my head at the moment, I'm quite happy to have that forevermore. Unless it breaks, I don't know, maybe then I'll get a new one. But at this point, it's absolutely perfect. So I could not recommend that buggy enough. Okay, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the car seat. So Mar so Gabriel actually came almost three weeks early, so we hadn't bought the car seat yet. We also don't actually have a car. They say you need a car seat to leave the hospital. You don't always, um, but I got one anyway because you can also put your car seat onto the buggy. And when he was very, very tiny, I just thought that was a good idea because I didn't feel that comfortable about putting a tiny baby in the bassinet attachment that's just me i just felt more comfortable putting him in the car seat because it's like a little cocoon also it turns out we did need that car seat a lot more because we were going up to the hospital because he was ill for about a week or so after he was born so we had to go to the hospital every day and having the car seat made it a lot easier we decided to get the well i <laughs> decided to get the cybex car seat and the reason why this is a slightly more expensive car seat the reason why i decided on it is because Fleur de Force said it was amazing <laughs> and um, I really liked that you can uh, like clip the back and put it into a lie flat position because in my head I wasn't sure how often I'd use the bassinet because I'd also heard that if babies got reflux or anything like that they don't really like to lie flat for that much. It just appealed to me that you could have the car seat in a normal position because they're not supposed to be in it for more than two hours um, at a time but if they were to fall asleep you could put it into a lie flat position. The only thing I will say about the Cybex car seat is that I don't feel like the hood goes over far enough. So when I was out with Gabe and I had the hood over and I was pushing him, if the sun was behind us and it was quite low, it would still be in his eyes. So I'd have to kind of hold it, the, the hood down. That's my only complaint. Other than that, I absolutely love it. I think it's really sleek. It looks amazing. If you do put it into the back of your car, you can also twist it. So the baby's in, in the car seat and they're facing like the, the back of the seat. So usually you have to reach over and get the baby out and put them into the buggy. With this one, you can twist it round so then you're front on with the baby, if that makes sense. So that's a great feature. And I think it's good for them until they're 18 months. So we will probably get a car within that time. So it will last us quite a while. So I thought, well, we may as well get it right now. And then at least we've got a car seat whenever we need one. It fit onto my eye candy line perfectly and it was actually all I used for maybe the first couple of, maybe the first month. I didn't, I didn't use the bassinet attachment for a while. I'd use the car seat all the time. And as soon as he was in the car seat, he was relaxed. He fell asleep, he absolutely loved it. And then it got to a point where he wasn't, he didn't seem as happy in there. So that's why I switched over to the bassinet. But anyway, the Cybex car seat, I can't recommend enough. Right, let's move on to the bed. We have a snooze pod uh, for his cot, which is next to the bed. I knew that I wanted something that was next to my bed and that I could kind of just reach into. 
A few reasons why. A lot of people said to me that if you have them in a separate cot that you have to like get up and get them out of, obviously through the night feeds, that's annoying to have to keep getting out of bed. Also, if you end up having a C-section, it's not very comfortable to lean over and into the um, crib to pick them out to pick them up out of it. So if you can just lean over and kind of shift them into bed with you, that's a lot more comfortable. Um, also, as I've realized, um, not so much now because he's a bit older, but I just like to watch him sleeping. So <laughs> when they're very, very new, you can get a bit anxious about whether they're still breathing. So it gave me comfort when in those first few weeks when he was in the snooze pod next to me, I took the side down and I could just look over at him. I could put my hand in and just make sure his stomach was moving. So I found it really reassuring to have a bed that's right next to me. It's basically to simulate co-sleeping, but without co-sleeping. They're not in bed with you. It's just like a bed extension. And I found that ideal. Um, it's just made things a whole lot easier in terms of feeding um, and just when he's sleeping and if he rustles in the night I can just put my hand on his tummy I can put his dummy in quite easily because I just reach over and he's right next to me I don't have to get out of bed and go over to the crib and see what's wrong um, so that it's just a lot easier when you're a bit sleep deprived basically that they're right next to you um, I knew I wanted the snooze pod this was also gifted to me which I was really appreciative of however had this not been gifted to me i was actually going to get one second hand from a friend of mine who'd finished having babies and still had her snooze pod and we were going to buy it off of her so that's something else i would recommend to buy second hand um there would have been no point us buying this new when a good friend of mine had one to give away however we did get it gifted so obviously i accepted oh okay hold on one second we, as he's going tend to the babe Okay, hashtag real mum probs. Um, the snooze pod. I can't really think what else I was saying, but I would just really recommend getting a bed that's next to you. It's got kind of storage underneath, which is great. I tend to keep muslins, blankets, the sheets for the mattress, um, sleeping bags. It, it did also come with the snooze cloud, which plays white noise and lullabies. And I think it has a light, but I've never actually used that. I didn't really want to get into white noise um, in order to settle him and it was just something that I just haven't used but this I have heard other people use it and say it's amazing they can't live without it it's just not something that I've particularly used but I can get into sleeping in another video okay speaking of sleeping I'm now going to also talk about the sleepy head so this is something that divides a lot of people I had a lot of people say their babies hated it a lot of people say their babies loved it my experience with the sleepy head is my sister had one. Um, she has two children and they both loved it. I wouldn't say Gabe loved it, but it was useful. I also don't know how essential it is given the price. It says it's good for them until six months. However, Gabriel is now three months and he's definitely grown out of it. Not lengthways, but widthways. It's just a real squeeze for him now. So I don't know if I would maybe say, because they do two different sizes. So just money wise, I feel like it would probably be more sensible to get the bigger one because that will last a lot longer. However, your baby might not be as big as Gabe, so it might last you six months. I just feel like it's quite expensive for what it is and you don't get that much use out of it over a prolonged period of time. We used it a lot when he was small enough to fit in it. We swaddled him in it. He would, it's just somewhere great to put them when you're just pottering around or if they do fall asleep and you want to try and put them um, somewhere for the, to encourage them to sleep independently. It was good for that. Yeah, I just don't know if it's completely worth the money for the amount that we used it. Just, as I say, just because he grew out of it so quickly. Something like that is good to have. Um, they often call them like a dock uh, or a pod. Something soft and squishy to put your baby on, basically, in the day so that you can get go about your day, try and get him to sleep in it. It is expensive. That's the only thing. And I don't know that it lasts as, lo as long as I hoped it would do. We basically don't really use it at all now. And we used it quite a lot when he was first born. I don't know if we could have lived without it, actually. I don't know, it's a tough one just because of the price point and I feel like maybe you should just get the bigger one. But he was comfortable in there, he did enjoy it, he slept in there really well in the day when we were with him. But it's just the price point on that one I'm just not sure about. But we did have one and we did, use a, we did get a lot of use out of it. So it's something I would recommend. But I would also tell you to keep in mind the price and the fact that he's already grown out of it and he's only three months. So there we go, that's that on that. The next thing is the 
Baby Bjorn Bouncer. So this is about £159. Again, I'm going to give away when you newborn essentials. Again, we didn't get this until a few weeks after he was born and he didn't really even start enjoying being in it until about a week ago. But I love the style of it. I, it's really comfortable for him. It's really soft. It, again, it's just a great place to put him. I found that they're basically lying down all the time. And I felt like there was a stage where he didn't want to always be lying down. So I wanted something else to put him in where he was slightly more upright. And that was where the baby Bjorn came in. And as I say now, he loves it. He's quite happy to sit in there and bounce along. Um, I just really love the style of it. I think it goes with everything. So what else? Next, we are going to talk about our play mat. So I decided to get this one from Skip Hop purely because I quite liked the colour. I... I'm one of those people that's like, oh, I really hate garishly coloured things, so I want everything to be minimal, everything to be neutral. However, with a baby, there is an aspect to it where it's part of their development, so you do need to have colour and contrast. And I just thought this was a really nice play mat in terms of all the ones that I'd seen. And he didn't really respond to it when he was very young, it was just something soft to put him on. But now he really loves it. He loves the mirror. I don't know if it's just because he likes looking at himself, but he loves the mirror. And around the mirror, um, it's got like a scrunchy kind of sound. There's also a ring that you can shake with little balls in it. And a sheep that plays Twinkle Twinkle Little Star that he likes. And his arms are a bit longer, so he, when he's batting around, he sometimes hits the ring. And he quite likes that. And he'll like, he's, I can see him looking at everything on the map. Um, and it comes with the tummy time pillow as well. Gabriel hates tummy time. So the pillow has been really useful because just putting him flat, he just hates it. He hates it on the pillow as well, but that does really help. So that was another reason why I went for this play map because it also came with the tummy time pillow. Right, let's move on to feeding. So I will go in depth about my feeding journey in another video, as I say, but I knew that I wanted to try breastfeeding. Just before I had Gabriel, Tommy Tippy was having a big, it was breastfeeding awareness week or something, and Tommy Tippy was having a big sale. And they have a feeding, a breastfeeding bundle. Um, so it came with things, the only breastfeeding thing about it was that it came with breast pads and their nipple cream, which I would highly, highly recommend, by the way. That, their Tommy Tippy nipple cream was my absolute favourite. Basically came with a steriliser and some bottles, like bottle carriers, like insulated things that you could take out and about with you, um, little containers to put formula in, but mainly the steriliser and bottles is what I was getting. Um, because I was recommended to get that and given my breastfeeding journey I'm happy that I got that so soon and I had it from the very beginning because we ended up having to give Gabe formula from the beginning because he lost loads of weight and he got ill. I'm glad that I already had the steriliser and the bottles ready to go because if I'd have had to have ordered that it was just a lot to think about at first so I would recommend even if you're planning to breastfeed I would recommend just having something like that ready to go. You can sterilise bottles just by putting them in boiled water but this is just a lot easier. I was glad that I had that in time for when he arrived. It was the only thing that really that I did have. Um, but yeah this bundle was just really good because everything came with it. You're ready to go. You don't need anything else. Also from Tommy Tippy, I was recommended this by so many people, it's the perfect prep machine. There's actually two versions, I have the older and cheaper version because I just don't think that you need to spend the money on the newer version because it's about £50 more, £60 more, maybe it's more than that. But it's a good £60 more than the one that I've got and the one that I've got is absolutely fine. I've got no problems with it whatsoever. It basically makes a, it's like a coffee machine for a bottle. It warms the water perfectly. You just add the formula in, shake it up and you're ready to go and it makes the bottle in like two minutes. And so when you've been boiling water and having to wait for it to cool down and preparing bottles, this is just life changing. The only thing I would say with this is there isn't much point getting it before you are giving them a lot of formula. When I was just topping Gabe up for a while, I was only giving him 30 mils, then it went up to 60, then it went up to 90, and that was for a good six weeks or so. But the minimum that you can make with the perfect prep is 120 mils, so it's not really worth getting unless you're only bottle feeding. However, when you do start bottle feeding and giving them that much formula, it's life changing. Like, if I could recommend one thing, it would be that. <laughs> okay. We're almost at the end. I'm gonna talk about nappy bags. Again, this is something that you don't need to spend money on. You don't need a specific nappy bag. However, I wanted one. But if you think about how often you're using it, everything that you need to put in there, to me, I think it's worth spending the money. 
There were two brands that I had my eye on. One is Tibra and Marl and one is Storpsack. I was very, very lucky and I had a nappy bag sent to me from each of them. Um, so I've been able to give them both a really good go. And again, I would recommend both of these brands wholeheartedly. It's mainly because I just feel like the designs are really sleek. I wanted something that was quite minimal, that was good that both Hainsey and I could use it. So you don't want anything that's too like girly or floral or anything like that. And also I'm just not a girly floral person, but I just didn't want anything that was too, I just wanted something black basically, but that looked good and was functional. And Tibra, Marl and Storpsack fulfill both of those desires, I suppose. I'll show you, I've got them here. So I'll show you the Tibra and Marl one first. And quite a lot of people have this. I really love the style of it. And you can get different um, finishes. I think you can get gold zips. And but yeah, it's just a really nice, normal looking rucksack. It doesn't look like a nappy bag. But inside, it's got lots of compartments. It comes with a changing mat as well, which is excellent. And then it's got a couple of pockets at the front. Yeah, there's a lined pocket just there to put your milk in. However, it doesn't actually keep it that warm, the water. So I put it, I still put it in my Tommy Tippy little uh, zip, like zip up bags because that does keep the water quite warm. Just a really nice backpack full stop. And then the one from Storks like I have is this quite big, it's almost like a weekend looking bag. You could use this for travel as well, not just because you've got a baby. The thing about this one is it's got a zip around here, if you can see, so you could extend it and make it bigger. So it's like a nappy slash travel bag, but I just thought it was really nice because it looks like a normal bag. And then this is the one I'm actually using, so it's got all my shit in it. Um, but there's lots of compartments. It also comes with a nice changing mat, uh, if I can find it at the bottom here. Nice changing mat, um, as well as um, like a bottle warmer thing. Which actually, let me go and get and show you. As I'm showing you these, I may as well show you everything. Oh. As I'm doing bottle warmers, I've just, this is the Tommy Tippy one that comes in the bundle. And this is the one I tend to use the most, just because it's a bit smaller. This one came with the stork sack um, coat. And yeah, I mean, what more can I say really? Actually, what more I can say, which is a bit disappointing, the Tibra and Mar one is marketed as a nappy bag. It doesn't come with the straps that you can then attach it to your buggy with, which I think is a bit, it's not very good. You have to buy them separately. However, stalk sack does come with them, but these don't fit over my eye candy one. So it's a bit annoying. I, the thing is just a bit too thick but they do come with straps, so that's a plus point. And also I just really like, like that you could put on your shoulder. I just really like this one because I like a tote bag, but you may like a rucksack and therefore I would recommend the Tibra and Wild one. My battery's flashing, so I need to wrap this up. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about is our baby monitor. I've got half of it here, which is this one. Um, yeah, it's the BT one. <laughs> I can't remember, Vodafone, no, BT, whatever model it is i'll put it down below you could go to town with baby monitors i didn't feel like i needed one that had an app on it um i definitely didn't want that one i think it's the angel it's angel care and it comes with the thing that you put underneath their mattress and it goes off if they don't move for 20 seconds definitely didn't need that i we, we live in a flat so to be honest I can just go in and look at him and I regularly do even though I have a monitor. You could easily spend four or five hundred pounds on a monitor. I don't think it's necessary. I just wanted something so that I could just look at him <laughs> and see if he was still asleep or if he was moving. And so this is ideal. I would recommend this monitor. It's been perfect. You can do things like you could talk and shush them from the room. It also plays lullabies. I don't use any of that to be honest because when he fusses I just go into him. The battery just died because obviously I've been talking for so long. Um, where was I? So the baby monitor. Yeah, you can get them with all these bells and whistles. For me, it's not necessary. We don't live in that big a place. <laughs> He's literally just out there. That's the one that we have. And I hope that that's useful. I should probably wrap this video up now as I've included everything I think in terms of big high price point items. Everything will be linked down below as well as prices. Uh, yeah, um, thank you all so much for watching and getting to the end if you did. I really, really hope it's been helpful. That's the main thing. I, As I say, I found these videos so helpful um, in terms of thinking about the kind of things you need because when you first find out you're pregnant and are preparing for a baby, you can just be like, what the hell do I even need? 
so i hope that this has helped um in terms of those higher price point things um i'm trying i think that's all i've got to say really um yeah as i say thank you all so much for watching and i will see you on the next one Mwah.